Are you wondering what are the most common tasks for the chemical engineering acting as a process engineer? Coming up next. Hey, what is up guys? Welcome once again to the channel. It's always great to have you back. And if you're new, guys, don't forget to subscribe. Remember that in this channel, we talk about chemical and process engineering for both the students and professionals. So if you want to learn more about chemical and process engineering, don't hesitate to click on the notification bell so you get all my latest videos. And in this specific case, what we are going to be covering are all the common tasks that you may encounter as a process engineer in the chemical industry. I really think that this may be very useful for young students, maybe high school students, if you're wondering what is a chemical engineer or where does chemical engineers work, or maybe you are already going to be graduating and you want to have a better grasp or understanding of what a process engineer is, this is the video for this. Now, probably you're wondering why I'm using interchangeably the term chemical engineer or process engineer or chemical process engineer. Well, I prepare a video, you want to check it out. But for now, let's stick to the list. The very first thing that you can imagine as an engineer is, of course, troubleshooting problems. That's the essence of the engineer. Either chemical engineer, process engineer, mechanical engineer, electrical engineer, civil engineers, any type of engineer has the task to troubleshoot problems. Actually, it is in the core essence of the word engineer. It comes from the old Latin word ingeniator o ingeniare o ingeniere. Sorry, my old Latin, it's not the best, but it's something related towards engineering something, creating, devising, contriving, innovating, solving, and much more. All these terms are all together going to be creating the concept of overall engineering. Back in the day, Romans used engineers for road construction, building construction, maybe even viaducts, aqueducts, which are essentially the piping systems or bringing water, clean water to the services, also sewage systems. Hence, you can imagine that the word engineer has been respected since early times of humanity. One of the most important aspects of being an engineer is knowing how to read data and of course create that data, how to create experiments, how to obtain those valuable data points and of course making sense of that, analyzing, and trying to understand and make sense of such numbers. So I actually remember being on statistics and one of my professors said, numbers, you can have a lot of numbers, hence big data, but the ability of understanding or making sense correlating, that's the art of statistics. The same is true for engineering. You can have a lot of data points, but if you don't make sense of those, if you're not able to understand what happened or what's going to happen, then the engineer has nothing to do in that place. Of course, designing and operation of equipment or processes is one of the core fundamentals of the chemical or process engineer, meaning that you need to understand how equipment works, how the substances interact with such equipment, and what are the typical type of processes. For instance, distillation, separation, heating, compressing, pumping, and much more. Safety, safety, safety. One of the core fundamentals of engineers overall is keeping the workforce and the workplace safe. This is also true with chemical processes. As you can imagine, many chemical substances are very hazardous for humans or overall the environment. The chemical engineer must put in place a lot of measures and ensure they are enforced by the workforce, either operators or process engineers or whatever type of personnel is operating in the process. Evaluation of chemical equipment and processes, but not only just the evaluation per se, but also the optimization of such operations. So as a chemical engineer, your main task will be to try to optimize. And what do I mean with optimize? It's mostly to improve in any point as possible. So typically the most important one will be safety, of course. The second one will be trying to prove the product the third one will be increasing profitability, maybe margin, or minimizing the cost of the raw materials, maybe the consumption of energy or so. Researching or conducing your own research is a classic for chemical engineers. Either if we're talking about the chemical engineer that wants to learn more about the process, wants to learn more about safety issues, environmental issues, technical issues, that will be a classic thing to do. Always go and learn more. But there's another aspect on research. You may want to do it directly on the process. This means that you will be working with pilot plants maybe, or maybe you will be sending a lot of testings to the lab and what you want to do is to try to understand the process with the given inputs and outputs of the same. But overall, the main idea is research, learn, and get new knowledge. 
Money, money, money. We know that everything is about money, especially when we're talking about chemical processes. The main idea is the creation of chemical materials that are actually marketable in our community. So it wouldn't make that much sense to create very expensive fuels, even though they may be very green and zero emissions, but if people is not willing to buy it, then why creating it? In the other hand, maybe you are creating the most soundproof material for construction, but it's too expensive or maybe it's too heavy and people are not willing to buy it. Hence the importance of being able to evaluate a project, know whether or not it's going to be feasible at the long run. And actually this is great because in the 10th, 15th, 20th, maybe even third year, there are many processes that are still profitable nowadays which is the main goal. Talking about money, cost estimation is another very key fundamental for the chemical engineer. The ability of knowing how to cost equipment, how to cost raw material, how to cost overall processes is one of the key fundamentals that's going to separate most chemical engineers from the average engineer. This one may sound a little bit boring and actually it kinda is, but it's very important, especially because it's the spotlight. You are now in charge of presenting the results. So either if we're talking about maybe production or about the products or about new researches, or maybe we're talking about quality reports, but overall presenting data or presenting a full report to your boss, to your seniors, to the C-levels is one of the most important things as a chemical engineer. So I actually remember one of my professors that was so sad that most chemical engineers don't have this ability to present data that he saw one of his students uh, already graduated working in an industry and he spent two years working in a single project and after that he presented the data. The data was awesome. A lot of new products, using a lot of new technologies and of course having a lot of profitability for the company. But he was unable to show that to the C-levels. For instance, the people in marketing, the people on operations, they were kind of curious on what all these technicalities on how the different processes, the different stages, the different reflux ratios and all that were actually having the impact in the final product. Scheduling maintenance. Sometimes you will be able to have a say on maintenance, sometimes you will not, because there will be a maintenance team, which are typically more into the mechanical, computer, or automation part, maybe even electrical engineering part, but the chemical engineer has sometimes the opportunity to at least schedule the maintenance. What we talk about maintenance is ensuring that the equipment is working properly, which typically will be related towards the process specification, which typically will be impacting the process overall, for good or for bad and this implies that it's going to be changing the final product specifications. Measurement devices and control devices. This is one of the most important things that maybe young engineers may not account for. And this implies knowing what exactly are we measuring and what exactly the data means. And not only that, what does this implies in the general process? So of course, when you see a temperature and you're a young student, maybe you think that this is the actual temperature that has the actual product. Well, technically speaking, it will be very hard to ensure that all the product within the pipeline has a temperature. And if so, how does the temperature changes from that point all the way to the thermometer? And is the thermometer pretty well calibrated? And if the display is actually going to be working, all these little things start to add up. So the chemical engineer has the task to ensure that he knows about the measurement systems, the control systems, and the impact in the process. Back in the days when I was a process engineer, I still remember that I really hated sending lab testings. Why? Not because I actually hate the action per se, but I really hated to wait, needing to wait for all this time to get the data points. Sometimes it will be four hours, sometimes it will be eight hours, maybe even 24 hours until I get the data. But still, it's very important to note that you will be sending a lot of the products to lab testing. Why? Either if it's routine, or maybe you're changing something, or maybe you're doing kind of experimentation or so, you want to know what's going on with the process. And yes, actually being a process engineer implies that you need to go to the, yes, process. A lot of chemical engineers nowadays just want to stick to the computer or control panel, but don't want to go to the area. They don't want to see the equipment, they don't want to see the people, they don't want to see all the piping systems, reactors and all that. This is nonsense. If you're going to be a process engineer, you need to be there. You need to understand what's going on. Maybe there is a interaction between human and machine that's going on that they will not be presenting you via email or via WhatsApp or whatever way of communication that will end up in the control room. In the other hand, these are great news guys because this implies that you will be moving all around and this is very healthy for your body. 
talking of humans, we're talking about making team. We're talking about the operators interacting with the engineers. We're talking about several engineering branches, such as mechanical, the maintenance, environmental services or utilities, quality, production teams, process team, projects team, and much more. So as you can imagine, everyone has their own agendas. So putting all together a single agenda, or let's say the best agenda for the company is of course of very important nature. For which I will say that communication, knowing how to work, leadership and communication are fundamentals for the process engineer. Which by the way guys, we know it might not be the best skill set for chemical engineers graduating nowadays. Training, training, training. So actually, if you are in a company that is willing to invest in you as an engineer, you gotta take advantage of that. Either from very simple courses such as mathematics, maybe statistics, maybe quality, or maybe going to the very expensive part, process simulation diplomas, maybe traveling you all the way to another country to learn more about a certain process or a certain technology, a certain lab report or so. Maybe getting trained on coding or software engineering, maybe in control part, automation part, or better yet on the marketing and sales part, maybe even in the communication and leadership part will be great. Any course is more than welcome and it's going to be adding more tools to your tool set. And finally guys, one of the most important parts, but it's kind of not a formal definition of being a chemical engineer, is making your boss happy. You wouldn't believe the actual amount of engineers that are not doing their job correct, that are not that proficient or are, may not be that willing to work or are essentially not going the 100% on their role. But because they have the boss happy, everything is smooth and without problems. In the other hand, you may be the best engineer, but if you don't get along with your boss or you're having problems with your boss, you may end up stagnating, maybe not getting promotions, maybe even getting sabotaged by your own boss. So ensure guys to get along with your boss or at least make him happy so that's it guys those are the main tasks that you will encounter as a chemical engineer working as a process engineer in the chemical industry and of course there are a lot of other tasks that I didn't include and they are of course important but I think for now these are the most important ones, especially the last one the bonus one now guys if you are already working in the industry you are a process engineer please let us know what other tasks are very important for the chemical engineer. Let us know in the comment section so we can start the discussion on process engineering working in the chemical industry. On my behalf, that will be it guys. I'll see you next video.